Let's use solver to solve a nonlinear equation. The way that we do it is we need to express an, a mathematical equation, the equation that we want to solve in Excel somehow, and then we also need to give solver an initial guess in order for it to start the solution process. So the way that we do this is within Excel we pick two cells. One cell will be the x value that we want to solve for. And this is a number that we put in as an initial guess. So I'm going to put in 1. It could be uh, any number that is reasonable for your initial guess. And then in another cell, anywhere else in Excel, in my case it's in cell B2, I need to express the equation in terms of x. So for now, let's say that we want to solve the equation x squared minus 25. So uh, x squared, x, my x value in this case is that number. I'm going to square it and then I'm going to subtract 25. So this is the cell B2 is just a function of this cell. So it really represents the equation x squared minus 25. So it represents f of x that we are trying to solve represents x squared minus 25. And the reason why I want to use this equation is because we already know what the solution is to this one. It happens to be two solutions, right? The one is uh, x equals 5 and the other is x equals negative 5. So these are two uh, two solutions to this function and I want to try find where f of x I want to find so I want to find where f of x equals 0. Where does f of x equals 0? What are the values of x that make f of x 0? How do we do this? We well, can use solver to, uh, to solve for for the values of x in order to make f of x zero. So to start the solution process we need to uh, start up the solver utility. So again we go to the data tab and then click on solver and then the solver window pops up and this is the place where you where you configure solver and tell Excel what must be changed and what must be solved for. So in the first uh, input there's set objective and the objective is the cell in Excel that you want to solve for. So in our case the, the cell that we want to solve for is our cell B2. It's our cell that represents the function that we want to solve for. So if we click on this little shortcut button we can use our mouse to click on the cell that we want to solve for. So in this case it's B2. Click OK and then we say what do we want the cell to be? So in our case we want that cell f of x to be 0. So we can change this, click on this radio button, change it to a value of 0. So now what we are telling Solver is that we want to change the cell to a value of 0. But how do we change that value to 0? We need to tell Excel which cells are we going to be manipulating, which cells are we going to be varying the values of so that f of x can go to 0. So in our case this cell b2 depends on a2. This cell is a function of that cell. So I want to pick that cell to change in order to make my f of x cell, my cell b2, equal 0. So again I can click on this little shortcut to help me. I can use my mouse and click on cell a2 when I click OK. Now I've told Excel that I want to change the value of B2 to a value of 0 by changing the value of A2. And then the next, so I've set up my solver. My solver knows now what value it must vary, what value it must get to, and what cells it must change in order to make that, that solution happen. So if I click Solve now, Solver hopefully will run very quickly and say it's found a solution. And has it found a solution? 
Well, it has because what it's done is it's gone and varied cell A2. The value of A2 has been varied to the point where the value of cell B2 has changed. And it's changed to a point where the value inside it is very close to zero. So you agree that minus 7.5 times 10 to the negative 7 is very small. It's very close to zero. So this is scientific notation in Excel to represent seven negative 7.5 times 10 to the negative 7. This is scientific notation over here. So again, this, this, this number represents a very small number. It's a very, very small negative number around zero. So it's, it's practically zero. It's not exactly zero, but it's practically zero. And that means that Solver has gone and found a solution to our function. So this number over here is the solution to our function. Before we put in the number one, we went to data, we went to Solver, we went and solved everything and it changed that number to 5. So again, if I put 1 in here, my function changes. It changes to minus 24 because that is what f of 1 squared minus 25 is. When I click on Solver, Solver goes and as provided I've set it up correctly, Solver will change, will keep changing that number in cell A2 until the cell that I've, my objective is 0. So in, in this case, I've changed it to a value of 5. So this happens to be the correct answer. It happens x equals 5 happens to be a solution of f of x because my equation is um, x squared minus 25. So if, if I substitute 5 in there, then this whole term becomes 0.